Khan presents... Big Ten Conference Basketball. This game is being brought to you by... Bud Light. By Counter Lock and Load. And by Norwest Banks. Live from Carver Hawkeye Arena, it's the ninth-ranked Iowa Hawkeyes against the top-ranked Indiana Hoosiers. Tonight, an emotionally charged, very special moment in Hawkeye basketball history as Chris Creech, uniform number 40, is retired. Chris gone, but never forgotten. Here's Father Bob Holzhammer. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the free throw line immediately in front of the Iowa team bench for a special ceremony. Tonight we assemble here to honor an exceptional member of the Hawkeye family, Chris Street. Representing Chris, Chris are his parents, Mike and Patty, and his sisters, Sarah and Betsy. Representing the University of Iowa are President Hunter Rawlings and Athletic Director Bob Bowlesby. In his career as a member of the Iowa Hawkeyes, Chris Street proved to college basketball fans far and wide that he deserved a special place in the history of Iowa basketball. Starting with his freshman year, he demonstrated a poise and court savvy beyond his years, and in so doing, earned a starting position midway through the season and never relinquished this starting role throughout his Hawkeye career. Chris's fiery determination and intense desire to win came into full view his sophomore year when he was named to the All-Big Ten team. This season, Chris led the Hawkeyes in rebounding, field goal and free throw percentage, and was third in scoring. He had just etched his name in the Iowa basketball record book by making 34 straight free throws. From the day prior to his junior year at Indianola High School, when he announced that he would be attending the University of Iowa, to the sounding of the buzzer at the conclusion of his final game as a Hawkeye, one constant was Chris's intense commitment to the university and its basketball program that he loved so dearly. This commitment is surpassed only by the love that he gave so unselfishly to his family and his friends. The University of Iowa and National Iowa Letterman's Club are pleased to announce that commencing next year, one of the scholarships funded by the Iowa Farm Scholarship Basketball Game will be named the Chris Street Farm Scholarship in his honor. The Iowa Athletic Department is honored to announce the official retirement of Chris's Iowa football basketball jersey and the number 40 in an everlasting tribute to one of the greatest Hawkeyes of all time, Christopher Michael Street. tribute to Chris Street, a Hawkeye through and through. Iowa and Indiana, a battle of top 10 teams coming up momentarily at Carver Hawkeye Arena. We'll be back with a further look at the game right after this. Welcome. A 
varsity crowd on their feet at Carver Hawkeye Arena prior to the start of the Iowa Indiana game. Good evening, everyone. With Mac McCausland, this is Larry Morgan. We've certainly witnessed a moving ceremony. And Mac, why was this particular game chosen for that ceremony? Well, when the Iowa Athletic Department officials decided to retire number 40, they went to the Street family. And the Street family said how good it would be to do the Indiana game. Chris Street loved playing against the Hoosiers. He epitomized the Hoosier way of playing basketball. Aggressive, tough, hard. Chris Street admired Indiana players and Bob Knight. They called Indiana Knight. Took it, as he told us today, as a high compliment to him and his program, his players. He said, oh, why not? He certainly did. Now tonight, Iowa takes on the top-rated team in the country. Why is Indiana so good? Well, when you look at Indiana, you look at team play. And what epitomizes team play is you've got five of their basic starters averaging double figures. They can score from every place on the court effectively any night. And in fact, in Bobby Knight's first 22 years at Indiana, three times he's had every member of his regular starting lineup score in double figures, and all three times his team has reached the final four. Now, as far as the Iowa situation is concerned, right now they're establishing a couple of go-to guys. Well, they've got a dynamic duel. Barnes and Earl, the two seniors, those are the only two players averaging double figures for the Iowa Hawkeyes, and those two have been the go-to guys late game situation. Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside, look for Indiana to try and take Val Barnes out of the game. Playing number one in the country, a great opportunity, and it has been a long time since the Hawkeyes have actually beaten the number one rated team. Well, I had an opportunity to sit on the bench the last time they did. That was in Chicago Stadium where they played UCLA. John Wood, it was Gail Goodrich, Walt Hazard, the guards. The Hawkeyes won that one. You didn't get off the bench, right? Uh, no, I did not. But you were there. <laughs> the Hawkeyes hope to duplicate that feat. First loss of the year for the Hawkeyes came against the Hoosiers, 75-67. Iowa tries for revenge and tries to knock off the top-rated team right after this. 8-0 in the conference. The Hawkeyes are 14-4. They are 3-3 in the Big Ten. Carver Hawkeye Arena is certainly emotionally charged for this game. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for Indiana. There are the regulars for the Hoosiers, all average in double figures. For the Hawkeyes, the same lineup they've gone with the last three ball games. How do you see the key matchups tonight? Well, I think the matchup obviously is going to be looking at what happens with AC Earl. Three for 15 at Indiana. They will look to double, triple him. And I think they're going to try and keep the ball away from Val Barnes. Somebody for the Hawkeyes has to step up, have a good offensive game. Now, some numbers, numbers sometimes will not always tell you the full story. Now, you look at the Hawkeyes and the Hoosiers, a couple of high-scoring teams in the Big Ten. In fact, number one and two respectively. Yet, last time, the score was under 75 for both. What do you look for tonight? I expect still a low-scoring game. And I'll tell you, because Indiana plays great defense, team defense, Iowa, they'll have to be patient, be selected to take the first good shot they can get. And historically, these teams battle physically. That'll slow the game down. Get to the foul line, maybe more than normal. In fact, that was the lowest scoring game the Hawkeyes have been involved in this week, this year. There are the officials, Ron Zetcher, the man on your left, Ted Hillary in the middle, Rick Walco on the right, and certainly, when you talk about a physical game and an emotional game, those men have their work cut out for them. Well, I'll tell you, it's just an electrifying crowd that's here. Unbelievable, the feeling, the emotion, and the crowd's ready, the Hawkeyes are ready. It's a matter now, I think you can forget about that Illinois loss. It's in the back of everybody's mind. The question they're asking around the Big Ten, can anyone stop the Indiana Hoosiers? As we mentioned, they are atop the league at 8-0. The Fighting Illini, after their victory over Northwestern today, are in second place, Michigan in third, the Hawkeyes rounding out the top five in the Big Ten Conference. And so it is Iowa against Indiana, Davis against Knight, in what could be, and in the past has been, a classic confrontation. Again, last time they met, January the 6th, it's Indiana beat Iowa by a score of 75 to 67. Well, the Hawkeyes are getting ready. They are huddling over by their own bench, the five starters. One last time, teamwork and togetherness. Back to their gold uniforms, which they are for the most part saving to play rated teams. And tonight they play a team that has lost only twice to number two, Kentucky, and to number three, Kansas. The Hoosiers have won eight in a row since their last setback. The Hawkeyes coming off the disappointing loss at Illinois, but as Mac mentioned, that's in the background now. Calvert Cheney, 6'7 and a half, and A.C. Earl at 6'10, jumped to get the ball game underway, and Ted Hillary to toss the ball up. 
Boy, you could just cut the emotion here with a knife. It's incredible. And it is Damon Bailey with the ball for Indiana. Val Barnes picks him up at the outset. And Val Barnes is called for a foul at the outset, nine seconds into the game. You know, there's two ways to take a player out of the game. One is to deny the great score of the ball like Val Barnes. The other is to get him into foul problems. First opportunity Bailey gets, he challenges Barnes, the defender, and drew the foul. Bailey did not start against Iowa the last time out, but he came off the bench for 21 three-point, rather 21 points, five three-pointers. Bailey, a 75% free throw shooter. Indiana, one of the outstanding free throw shooting teams in the country, ranking second in the conference. Indiana with the lead. One to nothing Hoosiers as we look at the top at Carver Hawkeye Arena. This is the way the Hawkeyes will set up their offense. Street against Nover, who gave him fits in Bloomington, and that duo along with Henderson coming up with a steal. And nothing has changed since Bloomington. The minute Earl touches the ball, two Hoosiers drop right on him. Graham drives and scores for Indiana, and Indiana jumps to a three to nothing lead. They have not played for a week since they won at Northwestern. So they've had lots of time to get ready for this one. An interesting match if you have Henderson on winners while Cheney is taking Lookingville. And Barnes scores for the Hawkeyes and the crowd so far as loud as they were against Michigan. I'll tell you, and that was the greatest crowd I've heard in Carver Hawkeye Arena history. Tonight, you certainly expect them to match it. David Bailey runs the show for the Hoosiers. This is Cheney. And Earl has the rebound. Cheney an off night against the Hawkeyes last time out, only 14, eight below his average. Hawkeyes take the lead on the drive by Barnes. That will not make Coach Knight happy, getting beat baseline. Bailey, not known for great defense, had Barnes go right by him. Greg Graham takes a look against Smith, tries to go around the pick by Nover. Hawkeyes stay man-to-man -man early in this game. Henderson mishandles it, and Looking Bill comes up with it for Iowa. Smith looking for Earl, hit the rim instead on what was a pass, and Indiana, trailing by one, comes up the floor. Nova underneath, travels. The ball goes back to the Hawkeyes. And we have heard Nova has really struggled lately. Last four or five games has not been able to be a scorer, has not been able to handle the ball well. Nova gets it here. Takes two steps, looking Bill reaching in to bother the gathering of Nover to go up and power the ball. Like Nover scored 29 against Kentucky, has not been the same player since. Looking Bill scores! Six to three, Hawkeyes. Winters watching Cheney, and what a tough assignment that is. Nover against Earl. Winters has called for the reach-in, and at least very early, Mac, it would appear that Hillary Zetcher and Wilco are calling a close ball game. And you're right, that is early. As the game goes on, you certainly will expect it to loosen up a little bit, but the officials don't want any problems early on in this game. Tom Davis, four and nine in his career at Iowa against Indiana. We talked about Nova. If you go back early in the season, he had six consecutive games in double figures. Since the Kentucky game, he has only had two games in the last eight with double figure scoring. Jay Webb, the first Iowa substitution, replacing Wade Lookingville. Cheney is crowded. There's a nice job kicking it out to Graham. And there's a foul on the rebound against Nobert. That's the first foul for Indiana, and the crowd explodes in enthusiasm. Seventeen twenty-nine left in the first half. It is Iowa with a six to three lead after Indiana scored the first three. The Hawkeyes have scored the next six. Indiana, of course, a classic man-to-man -man defensive team, and do they play defense well? Henderson, who really struggled against the Hawkeyes in Bloomington, comes up with a rebound. He got only four rebounds in that game. He averages 9.3, fifth best in the conference. Nova, not a good passer. He has only four assists in Big Ten play, over 20 turnovers. There, Nova gives it, threw it away again. 
Hawkeye ball. Bobby Knight off the Indiana bench. Not at all pleased with the turnover. Russ Millard comes into the lineup for the Hawkeyes. And Larry, you notice the substitutions. Of course, Dr. Tom Davis has already substituted Bob Knight. When you look at his bench, pretty short. Only a nine-player roster, in fact, for Indiana with the injury early this season to Pat Graham and the redshirting of Todd Lindemann. In fact, when you look over there, there's more coaches than players. Iowa tries to add to a three-point lead. Shot clock's at 15 as the Hawkeyes work against an Indiana defense that makes you work for every shot. Smith takes it with seven on the shot clock, and the rebound is taken flat-footed by Nover. Chaney, who's always played well here, is struggling early. Henderson can't save. It's Hawkeye basketball. And the freshman, Russ Millard, did a very good job. He went at one of the best shot fakers in Calvert Chaney. Calvert Chaney ball faked him up in the air. Millard stayed in his stance, stayed low. Chaney thrown off balance a little bit by Millard not going past him, giving him an open shot. Millard was still there to bother him. Montero Glasper, the freshman from Albion, Michigan, checks in for Iowa. The Hawkeyes playing with two freshmen on the floor. Barnes is certainly the go-to guy in the offense at this particular moment with Earl on the bench. Webb. And Barnes is there to put it back. And Val Barnes has six of Iowa's first eight. The Hawkeyes have an eight-point run underway. And Val Barnes goes to the offensive glass. Bailey fails to check him out. You can see Bailey probably getting ready to come out of this game. Henderson in traffic, scores! Allen Henderson, only a 2 of 11 shooting night against the Hawkeyes in Bloomington. He's got the feel he's got something to prove. Almost five minutes have been played as Winters tries to penetrate. And he is fouled. Nover got called on the push. And for Matt Nover, that is already two early fouls. And that's a man that Indiana can ill afford to lose. He is a very good team player setting up the screens against man-to-man -man defenses. 10-5 Hawkeyes. Here's that takeaway almost by Glasper. He got up there, tried to control it, tipped it out of bounds, and it's Indiana basketball. Indiana will try and break the press with their front line guards. If they cannot get it, they will send a diagonal man to the middle. Glasper expected it and got it as winners, intercepts. And then travels, and the ball goes back to Indiana. Okay, great anticipation by Glasper, the freshman. Chaney will inbound with Looking Bill, providing pressure. Jim Bartle is into the lineup for the Hawkeyes, and Chris Reynolds, number 21, has come on for Indiana. Chaney unable to get untracked thus far, and remember, he's the number five all-time scorer in Big Ten history. Evans a good perimeter shooter, but Earl knocks it away, and Bartles comes up with it. Evans, that time, slow with the ball, put it down in a soft manner. When you're in heavy traffic, you got to have a hard, quick dribble. So Iowa tries to build on a five-point lead. And a foul is called on Evans. Or no foul, they just ruled that he knocked it out of bounds. Let's talk about the points in the paint so far, already a factor. Well, we said Iowa basically an inside team. They like to go to the glass, get that second chance. Indiana, good shooters everywhere. Looking Bill open. Remember, he did not miss a shot at Illinois. And now he hits another to open the night's ball game and has hit two early baskets. Is that a gamer? Wave looking bill at Illinois, now at home, looking for that three-point shot. Five of five at Champaign on Thursday was looking bill. The crowd is on their feet here at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Henderson. Indiana cold shooting early. Winners, great athletic effort to get the rebound. The Hawkeyes playing with great emotion thus far and really executing exceedingly well. 
Winners from outside his range, and Henderson has the rebound. We talked about patience. That is not patience. That is not a shot James Winters will make very often. Get caught up in the emotion. All of a sudden, you start to get the trigger going a little sooner than you should. Reynolds looks for Cheney. And the left-hander nails his first bucket. Albert Cheney averaging 22.1. Number two in the league to produce Glenn Robinson. Winters tries to answer for the Hawks. And with a rebound, Greg Graham. And Cheney now two in a row. Calvert Cheney, Mac, has played unusually well here. 29 last year, 30 here as a sophomore. Well, mistake, mistake by James Winters. Two quick shots. And he is one of your better offensive rebounders. You'd like to have him around the glass, not putting it off the glass. Iowa with a four-point lead, 12-35, left in the first half. First basket for Earl. AC Earl. AC Earl every night. NBA scouts in the presence here at the arena tonight. Doing that certainly raises his value because he's probably a four-man or a power forward in the NBA, not a post player. Iowa's guards going to the boards well so far. Barnes a key rebound, Bartles a rebound there, and Earl finishes it off. And AC Earl has now hit two in a row, and Iowa's lead grows to eight. Hawkeyes off to a quick start against the nation's number one team. There's Greg Graham. Henderson's third early rebound, and as he tries to go up in a crowd, he is fouled by Wade Looking Bell. So Looking Bill with his first foul, and it is the third against the Hawkeyes, while the Hoosiers have been called for two, both against Nover. Don Davis really pleased with his basketball team and all the adjustments they have been forced to make. And he said, you really wouldn't believe the number of adjustments Iowa has been forced to make in their game. Well, I guess we're going to have a timeout. There was some conjecture what would happen. It is a timeout. We'll be right back after this message from your local station. This is the Raycom Network. 19 to 9, the Hawkeyes by 10. Once again, Indiana breaks the press, trying to throw over the front line of Iowa's pressure. If you remember the game at Bloomington, the Hawkeyes set the early pace, and at the 12-minute mark in the first half, had a lead similar to the lead they have now. And this is when Indiana began their comeback. Things are a little bit different. Different emotional level. You want to beat the number one team in the country. Brian Evans, the freshman from Terre Haute, gets the tip, 19 to 11. And Coach Knight told us today, one thing about Evans, he's got long arms, not a great jumper, but he gets up around the rim. Murray posting up, and the freshman scores. 21 to 11. The Hawkeyes by 10. Indiana taking the ball inside and drawing the foul. Knight spins, gives it up. It was a nice pass. And then Bailey unable to get the shot off. Here, the overhead look. You want to know why ACO has a chance to play at the next level? He has great hands, able to catch the ball in traffic, score in traffic. NBA people will tell you, you catch it in traffic, score in traffic, you can play. David Bailey is now one out of three from the foul line. The foul on Webb was his first. The Hawkeyes have been assessed with four, while Indiana has two. One more for Bailey. Damon Bailey, a schoolboy legend in Indiana. Bobby Knight discovered him in junior high. The interesting thing about Bailey, pretty old junior in college. He's 22. <laughs> yes, he is. Well, a little red shirting in high school. Smith works against one of the best defenders for Indiana, Chris Reynolds, and Reynolds comes up with a swipe. He's technically a very good defensive player. Great anticipation. I tell you, he has great work ethic when he's out on the court. Gives you good effort every time out. Okay, that steal came off the scouting report, too. He anticipated where that ball was going to go. At night, number 25 in the Hoosier lineup. As the left-hander Evans leaves it short and inside. He got a foul spotted. Henry Murray winds up on the deck, and he also winds up with a foul. Murray's first. And the Hawkeyes fifth. That is team foul number five. MJD, Hoosier lineup number 
Cheney back into the lineup for Indiana is going to the free throw line will be Brian Evans. You look at the foul situation. Hoosiers only two, Hawkeyes with five. And that is typical of Indiana. Indiana averages about 15 fouls per game. As you look at Coach Davis. Don Davis thought that foul might have been on somebody else. What is atypical of Indiana is the way they're shooting free throws now, Mac. They're just two out of five. And six. But again, to create or have only 15 fouls in the game keeps the other team off the line. The rebound taken by Chris Reynolds. Cheney pulls up over Smith, got caught with a mismatch. The 5'11 Smith trying to guard the 6'7 and a half Cheney. And with the foul, Reynolds. Nothing but holding right there is what Tom Davis says. Reynolds. Hand checking, preventing Smith from getting to the basketball. Now watch the hand check in the chest area. Hold, hold. Smith unable to get away. The whistle. Almost looked like they were dancing. I can't tell who was leading, who was following. Kevin Smith, who has 55 assists coming into the ball game, brings it up for the Hawkeyes, who lead it 21 to 14. <laughs> Iowa basketball. Indiana. Ball went inside, and there were plenty of red shirts yeah. there. Indiana plays a lot of help defense. You want to have everybody around the basket, and you've got four of them right there. Boy, that is amazing defensive support. Smith, they're all looking, Bill. Barnes and Murray right now in the Iowa lineup. Looking, Bill, with the ball, and he has hit seven in a row going back to the Illinois game. Tonight, he's two out of two. Hawks work on a set play. Looking, Bill, fouled by Cheney. And I'll tell you what happened right there. Indiana looked like they were going to anticipate the play. Didn't know whether they were going to switch in the lane or not switch. See the two players for Indiana. They kind of look at each other. Both go for looking, Bill. They actually screen one another, allowing Wade to go right to the glass, gets fouled. And so Cheney with a foul and Wade looking bill coming off a season high 14 points and four assists against Illinois goes to the line. For the Hoosiers, Todd Leary, a 6'3 junior from Indianapolis, checks in. He averages 4.9, but his season high and his career high have come against the Hawkeyes. And he is a three-point shooter. That's the first free throw for the Iowa team in this game with 9.14 left to go in the first half. Bob Knight with 607 career victories. 505 of them have occurred at Indiana. Rebound taken by Henderson. Henderson, four rebounds against the Hawkeyes in Bloomington, already has five in this ball game. I've been a little surprised why Indiana hasn't looked for maybe some more three-point shots. They've got the good shooters in there. Iowa now goes to their zone. As we talked about before the game, they love the three-point shot. They're second in the league in attempts and tops in accuracy. Cheney can do it inside or outside, but it goes inside to Henderson, and it's swatted away by Earl. Hasty coming up with the block. That is his 50th of the year. And what Indiana has set up is four perimeter players, one man going block to block, that's Henderson, has room to get the ball, but then he has to figure a way to get it off. Bailey way outside to Graham, and again, Indiana not trying the threes, and of course, that's what really hurt the Hawkeyes when these two teams met in Bloomington. In fact, Indiana had 30 points off of threes. Henderson there for the putback. However, I believe it will not count. It will not count. No, the shot clock went off. I mean, it went off like about three seconds prior to the shot. Nobody heard it. Rick Wilco finally saw it. I'm sure he had a help from the Iowa bench. Everybody was in his ear. Well, you're right with the bedlam. Nobody heard it, but you could see it. Take away by Greg Graham. Indiana didn't get the numbers. The Hawkeyes made it back defensively quite well. Now Cheney. Looking Bill has the rebound, his first. Look at the oh, sprint. what a feed. 
Kenyon Murray, a sprinter down the middle of the court. Glasper, great assist. Freshman to freshman, a terrific play, and Iowa builds the lead to 10. Wow, what a play. Indiana really lacking continuity in their offense right now. Cheney momentarily quiets the crowd, but Max, they don't look like the precision machine you're used to seeing from Indiana. Looks like there's some indecision of when to shoot. Getting the ball. That's all of a sudden, Kenya Murray gets pushed down. Murray goes down hard. Murray is still down. And now, Bailey hits the shot. Kenyon Murray is down and in very much uncomfortable. Look at Tom Davis. When he went in the air, he was pushed underneath. Came down then on his back. Let's watch the play, see what happened to Kenyon Murray. Looking Bill, taking the shot. I believe it's Damon Bailey blocking out. Kenyon Murray, Murray goes up, and then Bailey hips him out of the way, and Murray comes down. Watch the hip. Yep, right there. And right down on that left side. Looks like maybe his hip took the brunt of the impact. But John Street, Iowa's veteran trainer in his 20th season, is out taking a look. While he's attended to, we will pause for a timeout. 7.20 left in the first half. It's Iowa 24 and Indiana 19. And trainer John Streep escorted Kenyon Murray off the floor. He was able to walk off under his own power. He's gone back to the locker room. Watch Damon Bailey when Kenyon Murray's in the air, takes the hip, puts it right underneath him. Murray comes down hard. And now we come back to live action. The Hawkeyes with a turnover, and Indiana comes up with a basketball. Seven minutes to go on the half. Is on the baseline. It is Henderson. And Bailey tried to just swat at the ball, trying to tip it to somebody. But what he did was make contact with the Hawkeye and pick up his first foul. Had an arm around the Hawkeye, hooked him. Bailey not able to get to the rebound then. Tried to tip it to a teammate. Be interesting to see what kind of emotional impact the injury to Murray has on the Hawkeyes for this next stretch. Hawkeyes having a couple turnovers in a row, uncharacteristic since the Duke game as they've averaged just 10 turnovers a game. Greg Graham brings it back to the outside. Now Cheney rises up for a three. A 11 for Cheney. He got 14 against Iowa and Bloomington, and he's almost reached that total. Oh, well, he's a hard guy to guard for James Winters. AC Earl, offensive foul. Cheney is about three inches taller than Winters, so when he has to flash at him, indecision by Winters where to go. By the time he gets over there, Cheney's got a good look at the basket, squared up, knocked down the three. Kenyon Murray out of the lineup, at least momentarily. How does the rotation change, and what difficulties does it cause for Tom Davis? Well, it really hurts the position, the three position, because Winters is a more physical player, Kenyon quicker. They have a great relationship between them, as we talked before, Larry, they discussed the fact Kenyon was starting and said he preferred not starting. James and Kenyon went to Tom Davis. Tom Davis agreed, so they switched. Now they start James Winters. But Winters plays so hard, he can only go for about a four or five minute stretch. He has to take a rest. Without Kenyon, it's gonna hurt the rotation of the bench. Hoosiers down early by 10, a chance to tie it with a two and take the lead with a three. And there's a guy who can shoot the three, Todd Leary. And there's another one who can. And the Hawkeyes discovered that David Bailey was red hot at three-point range the last time they played. Smith off the dribble and the rebound by Cheney. Two on one for the Hoosiers, and it is laid home by Greg Graham. Game tied at 24. A quick decision by Kevin Smith that time. Off balance, fadeaway shot, going to his left as a right-hander. Definitely not what you want this particular point in a close game. Webb. Forced to the double dribble by Allen Henderson. Let's get a look at Indiana's last fast break bucket. Good decision, bounce pass, ball comes up. Man can receive it and go right to the goal without having to dribble it. Looking Bill replaces Webb for Iowa and he provides the defense. 
Bailey had Henderson in front of him, found him, but he couldn't finish it. And Russ Millard has his first rebound. Open, Millard, beauty. We have been waiting for Russ Millard to do that. He is an excellent shooter. He can go out to three-point range. Will build his confidence. Hawks by two, just over five minutes left in the half. Watch Indiana players. When they receive it, they look at the basket. That's the first thing they will do. They're really working the ball inside frequently. That time knocked out of bounds by Looking Bill, and he is slow getting up. Wade Looking Bill hit the floor hard. And of course, Wade has been plagued by back problems the last couple of years. And now he is limping as Kenyon Murray, who was hurt earlier, comes back into the Iowa lineup. Looking Bill limping, but he remains in. Now AC Earl will come out back into the lineup to replace him. But Kenyon Murray checked over quickly in the training room, is able to come back into the lineup. Looking Bill nods his head, yes, I'm okay, as he comes to the bench, but obviously he is not. He limped as he went off. You talked about how physical this game might be. You are right on the money. Leary. That is his 13th of the year, and it is a 27-26 Hoosier lead of one. See if the patience of the Iowa Hawkeye team can get an easy basket. Earl against a triple team. Millard with an offensive board. Russ Millard really working for the offensive rebound, but that time there were three Hoosiers around Earl, nobody to get the ball. Again, four Hoosiers around the glass, but it is the aggressiveness of Russ Millard that gives the Hawkeyes the ball out of bounds. And Leary got a foul out of the situation. Indiana with their sixth. The Hawkeyes have also committed six. Earl on the Millard pass, trying to work over Evans. Evans just bodied up while Millard will do nothing but aggressiveness there. Three on one for the Hoosiers, and Leary lays it in. You will watch Indiana. They use their chest and their legs. They don't use their hands and their arms when they go in around the glass area. They will body up people. You'll see Evans right there with a chest, right on AC. And he got called for the foul. Let's go back to the other end. Damon Bailey, really a master at running the break. He gives a look where he wants to go, finds the players coming down court. He's looked to his left and his right. He knows he's got both wings open. Here, the little no-look pass, layup opportunity. Hawkeyes have been at the line only twice, but now Indiana has committed their seventh, and Iowa will begin to get some free throw opportunities. First, some changes for Tom Davis. Val Barnes comes back in. Val tonight with six points, got all of them early. Monterre Glasper comes in at the point, replacing Kevin Smith. And as you said, Val had the points early. We have not seen Val Barnes be able to get to the basketball since about the 15-minute mark in this half. Earl misses on the free throw, but Val Barnes very active to come up with a rebound. Earl with the tip. Good choice by Earl. He had an opportunity maybe to dunk it rather than make the spectacular play. He wanted to make sure he got the basket down. Just a little tap into the rim. Indiana with a one-point lead. This has been everything you would expect against number eight against number one. And Albert Cheney hits his 13th first half point. Evans and Earl just bumping each other again. Murray runs around Graham. Barnes, good job finding the open man. Looking Bill with his third bucket. We talked Cheney, Barnes, the two best at ball faking. Right there, Barnes got himself open for a pass opportunity. And right, right now, you've got Val Barnes looking, going up, draws three defenders. Looking Bill by himself. And then the steal attempt by the Hawkeyes. A little squeeze play. Hawkeyes trying to deny the ball. Now Greg Graham going to go to the line. On the inbound, Murray with his second foul. Both teams now with seven. Thus far, Indiana has not shot free throws well. And that is a terrific sign for Iowa because in their two losses, Indiana has hit 45% of their free throws. On the other hand, as a team, they're 71%. But in the two losses against Kansas and Kentucky, less than 50%, and that's been their norm so far in this game. They are just two 
out of six so far from the line. Graham, though, a guy that virtually never misses. In fact, he has now hit 22 in a row. He is an 82% free throw shooter. And we broke the string, Mac. Yep. Usually it happens for an Iowa player. This time, Indiana. But the Hoosiers take advantage of it and turn it into a three by Graham. And it's a 35-30 lead for Indiana with three minutes left in the first half. Earl in the middle working against Henderson as Glasper fires from the wing for three. His second three-pointer of the season. Iowa back to within two. Watch the Hoosiers. They've gotten some confidence in their outside shooting the last three or four times down court. That spreads to the rest of the team members. Chaney calling for the basketball, not getting it. Shot clock down to 20. And Iowa goes to the zone. Chaney over the zone, right there. 15 for Chaney. 37-33 Indiana. This game already more high scoring at least in a half than it was at Bloomington. Barnes! One-on-one -on -one move that time. Val Barnes just took his man, squared up and made the jump shot. Here's Henderson having it swatted away by A.C. Earl. A.C. Earl right there, great anticipation to swat it away. That's what We've we got a timeout. About. Talk about the great hands of A.C. Earl catching and denying. We'll be back after this message from your local station. This is the Raycon Network. So now try and come across Iowa. Looking to play man to man. Now they're back to their zone. They got a trailer. Sorry. You've got Leary being chased by Smith. As Henderson misses the shot, a scramble for the rebound. And Indiana got called on the push. With the foul, Greg Graham. It is his first. Henderson going up, struggling from the field. You've got Graham. And Russ Millard trying to block him out, keeping him there. At least you didn't let him get to the basket. But on the other hand, Indiana people would have to question the call. At 183 pounds, I think he had little chance of moving around <laughs> Russ Millard. Russ has a strong upper body. He really does. He's a quick jumper, very quick to the basketball. Watching him in shoot around today, this young man has loads of energy. He is really pumped for tonight's game. He's got three points. And He's a talent. good free throw shooter. Good talent, good touch for a big man. I'll tell you, he, he approaches basketball like a business. He told us, he said. He scored 14 against BYU. They've been a team that has not shot well, but he's shooting better, better than 50%. And he's been the, the lone uh, bright spot, especially the last three ball games, because uh, uh, the half court. Hawkeyes send Webb in for Millard, and the crowd has quickly taken to Russ Millard. Eighth ranked Iowa, number one Indiana, tied at 37. Larry in for Indiana, along with Cheney. Chris Reynolds also in, so two non starters, plus Henderson. You've got now a triangle and two out there with Cheney being chased and Graham. There is Barnes pulling up, firing, and not getting it. He doesn't away miss. Comes Graham. He doesn't miss the bank shot very often, Larry. It's a great soft touch for him when he comes off the break. Into the final minute of the first half. Henderson scrapping for a rebound. Earl and Webb were also there for the Hawkeyes, and the foul was called on Jay Webb, and it will be Webb's second foul. Bobby Knight in his career against Iowa stands 27 and 14. You know, you look at a, a great motivator there, and of course now Dan Gable just put out a, a motivational tape, which uh, is for all people, not just wrestlers or just athletes. So you've got two of the best, one in Iowa City, the wrestling coach, one in Indiana, Bloomington. I think Gable could motivate anybody with a pulse. 
wrestlers had a, a good meet today. They won. Yeah. The Northwest Western. team won. They beat Indiana 170 to 110. Mike Johnson won three events in his final home duel. Congratulations to Mike. Cheney goes between two Hawkeyes to keep it alive. And now Indiana can play for the last shot. The shot clock is off. We're down to 34 seconds in the first half. can imagine Cheney will want to try and get it. See if they try and go to him. Indiana holding a one-point lead. Here's Leary against Winters, and it's blocked by Millard. Winters from midcourt. Almost. And Indiana will take a one-point lead. At halftime, the top-rated team of the country, Indiana, leads Iowa by one. 38-37, our halftime score. We'll be right back. Knight does not want Val Barnes to become a strong offensive player in this game. Iowa shooting 53% in the first half, and only one team for a ball game has shot better than 50% against Indiana, and that was Minnesota. And that came down to the very end of the game in which Minnesota lost at Bloomington as there was a drive in which Minnesota almost won that ball game. And they were so happy with the, unhappy with the officiating, even the governor of the state wrote a letter to Rich Falk. <laughs> Foul called on Indiana's Greg Graham. It'll be his second. So the Hawkeyes showing some good patience. And as a result, Indiana with a foul. And that's one thing in the first half. There was times with impatience. Here, Earl, a little dump off. Again, Indiana really denies you an easy basket. They just will not let you score around the basket. Bob Knight orchestrates off the Indiana bench. And of course, Knight has won three NCAA championships and 10 Big Ten championships. Winters goes to the line for the Hawkeyes. Iowa ties Indiana at 38. Winters keeps looking better and better at that free throw line. That one's a little long. Lane violation. And Winters will go right back to the line with another chance. Winters is going to try and make a two out of three. Watch at the top of your screen. Cheney blocks off before the ball's released. His foot is over the line. Good call by the official. And good camera work by our crew to catch it. Same result, though, and Cheney has the rebound. Game even at 38, first minute of the second half. Indiana trying to go to 9-0 in the lead. Henderson pushed, and he got caught doing it by Ted Hillary. Reynolds, not a scorer, taking the offensive opportunity to try and go up. He is open, but gets intimidated by the big people of Iowa. Puts it over the basket, and then the foul takes place. First foul called on Henderson. So the Hawkeyes on their second possession of this half. Look at that tough Indiana man-to-man -man defense. Smith guarded by Graham. Barnes working against Reynolds. Good matchup, tough matchup for Val, because Reynolds is so quick. A oh, little baby steps, nothing called. And a three, the result, Cheney with 18. It is a three-point lead for the Hoosiers. <laughs> Deflected by Reynolds. Let's get another look. Let's see if he did walk, Matt. The trailer. Good play for Indiana, looking. Cheney gets it. One, One two, and up. But Cheney, he'll be able to get away with that one next year. Millard checks into the lineup. Looking Bill comes out. Millard dishes inside. And look at the red shirts around Earl. But he puts it in anyway. Four defenders. A.C. Earl works his way through it. He got hit in the nose. He's going to have to kick that out quicker. 
as Indiana drops down. That had to impress the NBA scouts, don't you think? Well, again, nobody pays attention to Reynolds as he drives in there. Fouled on the way. Let's get a look at A.C. Earl shooting against all the Hoosiers virtually. Uh, you've got four of them. I mean, they are all over him. Iowa players, though, are not making themselves available. They left A.C. clearing out the side. You've got to come to him and go to a gap where an Indiana player cannot see you helping A.C. out. The foul was Winter's second, first against the Hawkeyes in the half. Indiana with a one-point lead. Bailey over Murray. And Smith runs quickly. Ahead of Reynolds, Reynolds reaches out a knee and draws the foul. Second foul called on Chris Reynolds. Reynolds stuck out a knee a little bit and caught Smith as he went by. A late call by the official. The crowd called it for him. Hawkeyes go for the lead with 17.50 to play. Elsewhere in the Big Ten, Minnesota and Michigan State, quite a battle. And that will be quite a battle. I would it imagine will. to be very physical. And having the Spartans struggled at home this year. Smith open. Yes! Man, they called it a three-pointer. I'm not sure, Larry. It looked like his toe may have been on the line. But the Hawkeyes will take it. They won't give it back. 43-41, Iowa with the lead. Blocking foul. And the crowd doesn't believe it. Murray called for the foul. His third. The foul is called on Kenyon Murray. Murray's third. spending a lot of time down on the floor tonight. Especially at that end. That is three fouls on Kenyon Murray. And of course, his game is defensive aggressiveness. Almost got the steal there. And goes back to the floor again. Indiana ties it with the two, takes the lead with the three. One thing to bear in mind about Indiana, they're a very, very tough second half ball club, especially lately. You look statistically, Larry, the last seven games, they have shot 60% from the field and 80% a missed dunk by Henderson. Wes Millard was right there to intimidate. Smith! And Earl scraps for the rebound. It will be Indiana basketball. Look at this tussle. And Henderson comes. Millard right there to intimidate. Miss dunk. Indiana gets the ball out at the other end. And that may be four. There is number four on Kenyon Murray. Murray's fourth foul comes with 16.39 left. Now, we talked about it when Kenyon was injured in the first half, Mac. This really changes a lot of the things the Hawkeyes can try to do. But well, now you have winners come in. And like I say, James plays so hard, he can only go three and a half, four minutes. He gets tired, he needs a rest, so it may be Wade Looking Bill will have to play some of that three position. Bartles may have to go to the three position. It'll be interesting to see what Tom Davis and the staff do. The Hawks have won 10 in a row at home since losing to Indiana last season. Open, Bailey. And Henderson comes right back up with it to score. Second basket, fifth point for Allen Henderson, the sophomore from Indianapolis. First tie of the second half. We didn't finish a thought earlier, Larry. We talked about Indiana playing so well in the second half. 60% in the second half from the field, 81% from the line in their last seven games. Part of that's experience, having a veteran ball club. The other part, of course, is a tremendous amount of ability. And they just have shooters in all positions. As the opponent tires, get you a better shot, a more open shot in the second half. Cheney with 20, his average is 22. He has to average only 15 to become the all-time leading scorer in Big Ten history. Glenn Rice right now holds the record. Winters goes in traffic and gets fouled. And in Indiana, uncharacteristically, is getting in foul problems sooner than normal. That is already their fourth team foul. And just a little over four minutes gone in the first half, or second half. Second call on Henderson. No Hoosiers have more than two fouls. And Matt Nover, who had fallen into disfavor with Bobby Knight with two very early fouls and some defensive lapses, will now come in replacing Henderson, who has two fouls. 
Albert Cheney has hit his last six shots, nine of 12. You know, you were telling me earlier today, Calbert Cheney not highly recruited out of high school. Hard to believe. It is. Tell you, he came from Evansville, Indiana, and did not go to many of the summer camps. He went to one, and for a while, everybody thought Jimmy Cruz. In fact, Jimmy Cruz said, gee, he may be able to get him to Evansville. Once he got to the camp, he just lit it up from all over. All of a sudden, everybody knew who Calbert Cheney was, and of course, Indiana then gets him. Winners, four points. Iowa back to within one. The score, Indiana, 45, Iowa, 44, 15-27, left to play. Huh, can they just on Kenyon last seven games as they get a five-second count? Five-second count for the Hawkeyes on defense. Kenyon Murray in the last seven games, when he has reached double figures, Iowa has won. When Kenyon Murray did not reach double figures, they have lost all four of those games. That is interesting. Great Hawkeye defense to force the five call, and now Iowa inbounds. Glasper, Bartles, Winters, looking Bill and Webb right now in there. And Webb on the turnaround. And of course, Kenyon Murray with four fouls and just four points in this game on the bench now. And interesting that also Earl and Barnes are both on the bench. And Iowa has the lead at 46 to 45. Todd Leary inserted for Indiana. That is Chris Reynolds. Reynolds really not much of an offensive threat. He will rarely look to shoot him back. Oh, great balance. Great balance by Glasper. Looking Bill has been hot. And the rebound kept alive by Greg Graham. Graham, nice dish to Reynolds. His first bucket. Indiana back into the lead. 47-46 is the lead. Seesaw is back and forth. What a great college game. It's everything you want. Emotion, number one rated team in the country against number nine. And a holdout is spotted. Nover, that's his third. He has just not gotten into the flow of the game at all tonight. Two early fouls, found him a seat on the bench. And now he picks up foul number three. And Nover played just five minutes in that first half before picking up those fouls. Well, we talked Nover really struggled for the last six or seven games, not being able to catch the ball, score. That Kentucky game, he was fabulous, 29 points. Looking Bill, finds Winters. Hawkeyes need to score to take the lead. And there's an offensive foul, and for Winters, it's his third. So now Murray with four, Winters with three. For the Hoosiers, Nover has three. That's the foul story. Smith comes back in for the Hawkeyes, and so does Barnes. The fact, though, that Tom Davis in this game could go for at least a couple of minutes, or a couple of seconds anyway, without Earl and Barnes indicates something he said all along. There's a lot more talent on this ball club other than those two that some of these people don't give Iowa credit for. Well, it is a team. It has certainly been a team focus of late. People stepping up, doing what they do best, and working together without any problems, animosity among the teammates. Looking Bill Murray Webb, couple of examples of that. Inside Nover, and that time Cheney made it. That time Nover slid behind the zone. Penetration drew the defensive players, leaving them open for the dunk. And it looks like AC Earl maybe sprained an ankle. Jay Webb quickly off the bench as AC favoring his right ankle. And maybe he just hit knees. It looks like maybe they just knocked knees together. Boy, that does hurt. Ted Hillary, the official, stands with him, while Tom Davis will now welcome A.C. Earl to the bench, and John Streep is off to take a quick look at the knee of A.C. Earl. What a physical game this has been. And that is not a surprise. Now looking at the bench, John Streep is looking at that right ankle, feeling it up on the side of the calf. Webb takes it to the hole. And Jay Webb stepping up his game with a main man Earl out. 
I will buy one. 13 minutes to go. Now you really have got to be aware of Cheney. He's shown you he can shoot it from medium range, from three-point range, and drive the middle and dish. He has become their offensive creator in this game. He will not choose to put it on the floor, but rather pull it out. We're down to 20 on the shot clock. Cheney to the top. Looking for Nova, fouled by Webb. Webb with his third foul. Tough foul there for Jay Webb. Hawkeyes really have not had to deal with foul problems for the most part this year. Just three players have fouled out. Winters now with his foul problems of three will leave. Inbounding it, Greg Graham. Top-rated Indiana with a one-point lead over eighth-ranked Iowa. Nover pulls down the offensive rebound, has it blocked by Webb. Barnes for three. Leary comes back with the long rebound. Now Bailey for three. And Murray rebounds. People pulling the trigger, I'll tell you though, they're getting good looks at the basket. You can't complain about that. They see it, get what they want. But this is a running game right now. Graham gonna try and take it to the hole. And Murray, his second rebound of the ball game, and they've occurred on the last two Indiana misses. Smith challenges Leary and gets the foul against Leary. Leary with his second. Kevin Smith's spin move, I'll tell you, it was nothing but Thoroughbred basketball for the last five trips up and down the court. 30, Leary, Indiana now with 16 fouls, the Hawkeyes with five. So Iowa with a chance to get a couple of free throws here and regain the lead and should have plenty of free throw opportunities down the stretch. Being patient, being smart, getting the ball inside, we're driving it where Indiana will reach. We'll get the Hawkeyes to the line. Smith has four points, and the Hawkeyes tie the Hoosiers at 49. Number 25, Pat, Knight. Pat Knight, the coach's son, comes into the lineup for Indiana to take the place of Damon Bailey, who throughout his career has been known as a rather inconsistent player, and tonight's one of those nights he is just not on. Uh, it's an off night, and there were games last year when he scored zero points. Five for Smith. The Hawkeyes take the lead at 50 to 49, 11.48 left to play. We'll be right back after this message from your local station. This is the Raycon Network. Shooters, you pay more attention to those people that have done well in that first half. Cheney, Nover, Knight, Graham, and Leary make up the Indiana lineup. For the Hawkeyes, Webb, Winters, Glasper, Bartles, and Earl. 11.40 to play. I will buy one, 50-49. And Iowa's really gone to using that zone defense forcing Indiana to try and take that outside shot, maybe under a little more pressure. And Cheney takes the outside shot and hits his 22nd point. Indiana runs a great screen to get Cheney open, I'll tell you. Earl slams. AC Earl in double figures. And the Hawkeyes back into the lead at 52 to 51. And there is a foul. Glasper making the effort, picking up the foul, and that will be his first. 16 foul on Iowa, so now both teams into the bonus on the next foul. Inbounding it, Pat Knight. Not only a sophomore. Leary, who is normally an outstanding three-point shooter, held the one so far tonight. But Cheney has exploded for 22. He's the big scorer for Indiana. Nobody else in double figures. Indiana will do a good job of taking the ball to one side, and then they reverse it quickly to find an open man on the weak side of zones. Leary. And Nover goes high to pull it down. And it's out of bounds off the Hawkeyes. And Ted Hillary got knocked over on that fray. The crowd likes that. Obviously. 
He's telling Ron Zetcher he's okay. Russ Millard has got a smile for everybody. He's got one for Jed Hillary. He does have a smile for everybody. What yes, a delightful guy. Bartles out, Barnes in. Val has yet to get on track here in the He's second. moving. He's moving. That, that is a violation. That is a violation. It is the Hawkeyes with the ball and a one-point lead. Let's get another look. Moving along the baseline. He will just hop to his left. That's traveling. When you have a stationary situation where the official hands you the ball, unless it's after a made basket, you cannot move. That is the kind of a turnover that Bob Knight never likes, especially when his son commits it. Iowa tries to build on a one-point lead. Val Barnes really struggling all for his last six shots. They pay attention to him. Graham, knowing where he is, forcing Val out beyond the three-point line. Val may have to start taking it off the dribble. Allen Henderson, who has been on the bench with two fouls, comes back into the lineup. And Pat Knight will leave. Millard inbound. Glasper. And Winters goes way high to pull it down. But then it is pulled away from him by Graham. And here comes Indiana, trailing by one. What a ball game. It continues to seesaw back and forth. We're down to the final 10 minutes of regulation. Cheney for three. Oh, this guy is unstoppable. 25 for Calvert Cheney. And he gets to look at the basket. Right now, that thing is the size of the ocean. I'll tell you, he is throwing it up there. Ball finds its way down to the bottom of the net. He shoots 53% on the year, almost 40% at three-point range. A terrific offensive performer. Has a chance to be maybe the best player under Bob Knight in Indiana history. And there's, there have been some great ones. Well, he told us today when we asked him if he's the best ever, he said, call me after the last game. I'll give a comment then. Barnes ties it at 54, his first second half basket after missing six in a row. And that's what Barnes has to do, is be able to cut more, go to the basket. He's not going to be able to get his perimeter shot. Cheney against Earl. And it will be Indiana's ball. They are calling it a jump. Interesting call, jump ball, <laughs> possession arrow gives it to the Hoosiers. Yeah, you'd almost say travel or foul. That's a bailout call right there. Interesting call indeed. Now Nine Murray. minutes to go. Yeah, Murray with quickness. Oh, Russ Millard. Coming across. Official said it was across the arm. And now Dover going to the line. As you mentioned earlier, Larry, Novar has struggled in a lot of places in the last few games, but the free throw line has not been kind all year. 51% Novar at the free throw line this year. Indiana takes the lead, though, on the free throw by Nover. Nover, a senior out of Chesterton, Indiana. In fact, a man very much touched by the death of Chris Street because he moved with him this summer overseas. Now, he told us today that he had written the streets and really had a lot of sympathy and a few private moments of thought about Chris Street when coming to the arena today. Iowa tries to regain the lead. Kenyon Murray gets knocked down. There is Barnes rising up for three. Earl trying to tip, but Henderson got great position to pull down the rebound. Indiana by one. Neither team can pull away. Very early in the ball game, the Hawkeyes led by 10. Since then, though, it has been back and forth. Cheney still red hot. 27 for Cheney who scored 29 and 30 in his last two visits to Carver Hawkeye Arena. Right there, a one dribble drive. He shows you the ball. The defender has to respect and go out, get in his face. And when he does, as you come towards him, he just takes that one dribble drive and rises up again. He gets up high, surveys the situation. Great offensive player. Earl pulls Iowa back to within one. 14 for Earl. 
And Earl, an outstanding offensive player. Once again, the Hawkeyes staying in that zone. They are going to try. They have got to find Calvert Cheney. They're on their feet once again at the arena. Oh, is the crowd into this one? Henderson, good move. Oh, what a tough drive by Henderson. And the defensive feet of the Iowa Hawkeyes are getting a little slower. Not reacting as quickly that time to the drive by Henderson. Have to step in, look for the charge. On the other hand, Henderson just spent a couple of minutes on the bench. He is fresh. Millard. Almost. Millard had the rebound, lost it to Cheney. The Hoosiers buy through. This is a big trip up the floor for them. Yeah, nobody's been able to pull away. I don't think there's been a lead of greater than three points in this second half. Not at all. You watch Calvert Cheney come down the floor, Mac. He's always talking. He's always gesturing to his own teammates. He really runs the ball club. And Henderson, really a presence now. Six and a half, nine in the ball game. 61-56, biggest Hoosier lead of the game. And the crowd trying to get the Hawkeyes going. They need to score here to really take away the Indiana momentum, the number one team in the country. 6.20 remains. Here's Earl taking it to the lane and scoring. Big basket for Iowa. That keeps the pressure on Indiana. 8.30. AC Earl tonight, 16 points. He is Iowa's leading scorer. The Hawkeyes need a stop now. Nova misses. Iowa gets the stop. They come down the floor, trailing by three. And Bailey, call for the foul on Smith. For Damon Bailey, his second. 5.43 left. Smith goes to the line with Iowa down by three. Six rebounds tonight for Kevin Smith. Wow. To Bailey, number 22, that is his second. Team foul number seven on the Hoosiers. So Smith to the line. If he hits them both, Iowa back to within one. Tonight he is perfect in two free throws, has five points. Six for Smith. Right two now, point game. the officials are going to talk to the people along the lane. Rick Wolko and Ted Hillary, a little tired of all the elbowing along the lane. Tom Davis, meanwhile, plays with Ron Zetcher as Rick Wolko separates the bodies along the line. Bob Knight has to feel left out. He's at the other end of the court. Sinks them both. It's a one-point ball game. Indiana 61, Iowa 60. And we will return in just a moment. Hey, listen, don't buy a college basketball game between top 10 teams and Indiana leads Iowa 61 to 60. Travel the range through Northwest Airlines. All Americans step up. We're watching a one for each ball club, and they have both stepped up. When you watch Cheney, you're looking at nine in a row. Here's one of them, 12 for 15 in this game. And then you've got AC Earl, who in the second half, four for four. Here's one of those, eight for 11 in this game. Iowa's leading rebounder tonight. Would you believe Kevin Smith with six, a season high for him? The Hawkeyes out of the zone, they go man to man. Indiana with a one point lead, and this ball game looks like the one the other night, right down to the wire. And you've got looking Bill on Cheney. That's a tough quickness match for Wade. Travel on Henderson. The Hawkeyes have a chance to take the lead with 5.16 to go. Iowa Hawkeyes have won 20 straight games when shooting 50% or better. Tonight, they're right on the Magic 50. And again, only one team has shot 50% against the Hoosiers this year. That was Minnesota, and Indiana pulled that game out at the wire. Just under five minutes to go. 
Smith. Right there. What a half for Smith. He's got nine points all in this half. And some debris tossed on the floor. Smith gives Iowa the lead at 62 to 61 with 4.48 to play. Cheney will inbound for Indiana. Cheney goes long. That one can get tipped. And Bailey gets it back after Barnes tipped it away. Hawkeye's guilty of fouling. AC Earl picking up his second. Almost a terrific interception by Val Barnes. Loose ball situation, length of the court. This is a lob pass, it's not a rifle pass. Barnes reads it, he tips it, unable to go chase it down. Bailey heading towards the basket, retrieves it, and then a foul on Earl. Certainly a questionable call. Official from behind made that one. Bailey has really struggled at the foul line tonight. He's now just three out of six. He ties it at 62. Watch the blockout necessary by Iowa and the aggressiveness by Indiana in case Bailey misses. Looking Bill and Earl, the tight Iowa rebounders. But Bailey makes it academic and gives Indiana a 63-62 advantage. Guys being forced by Indiana to be patient, but Iowa doing a good job of that. And again, if you're going to shoot 50% against Indiana, you've obviously been patient. Earl wants to work against Henderson on the triple team, and Indiana comes up with the basketball. There was no chance. Once AC spun, he was behind the basket. The only thing to do was travel or throw it back out that time to the Hoosiers. Bobby Knight right now, arms folded on the Indiana bench. Looks very placid at this moment. Well, they have a walk up on the floor. You can do that, I guess. And the assistant coaches, Ron Felling, Dan Dockage, are the ones that are excited. They're off the bench in a crouch. The foul charge to Smith with the foul. That will be his first. It's Iowa's ninth, so it'll be an automatic two-shot free throw opportunity on the next Hawkeye foul. Winners out, Murray in. At the line, Graham, an 82% free throw shooter, had hit 22 in a row prior to a first half miss. The pressure starts to mount now. Every time down court, extremely valuable. Indiana goes up by three, 65-62. And you're right, every possession now becomes vital. We'll be right back after this message from your local station. This is the Raycom Network. This sellout crowd has been treated to a terrific college basketball game, one played with great intensity and emotion. Well, it's certainly been emotional for quite a while. Every game for the Hawkeyes has been emotional, but this one, the Hawkeyes have come out and again played very, very well. Right now they've got the number one team in their grasp, but the Hawkeyes are down three points. Opportunity here to tie with 3.50 to go. You mentioned a moment ago when Iowa was down by three. It was a very key possession, and it's certainly the same story now as Millard backing in against Nobert and gets it blocked. And now Indiana, a key possession for them. They try to equal their biggest lead of the game. Well, Millard got it blocked, plus an elbow in the mouth. That will not make Russ a happy person. It has been a very rough basketball game. Cheney finds Nobert, and Nobert hits the shot. And Indiana once again up by five. 67-62. This is critical. Hawkeyes must look to get a great offensive opportunity here, either from the field or going to the line. 
I'm sure Tom Davis is very pleased for the most part with the decisions made by his team on offense as Cheney and Millar got into a shoving match and Cheney picked up the foul. Both teams, the second half, have really valued the basketball. They have come down, taken care of it, looked for good opportunities, and found teammates that have been open. Iowa has had trouble reversing the ball when it's gone into Earl, but other than that, have had good opportunities. Russ Millard, a terrific free throw shooter, but rarely, well, never at Iowa has he been under pressure like this. It's amazing how quiet 15,000 can grow, <laughs> isn't it? Millard, three of three from the line. The Hawkeyes back to within four. Freshman from Cedar Rapids coolly steps to the line under pressure and hits them both. Huge free throws there. Again, now it's one possession difference to tie. A three-pointer, it's tied. Now Indiana, very good with the basketball. And of course, good free throw shooting team. They will try and take care of it here, take some time off the clock, and then look for their go-to guy. And of course, their go-to guy has got the ball right now, Calbert Cheney. He is left-handed. Predominantly likes to drive it left, pick up the dribble there. Shot clock is at 15. Graham also an offensive threat. He's got it. The shot clock's at 10. Bailey and Henderson high for the rebound, but Barnes knocks it away from him. And Val Barnes comes up with it. Great hustle by Barnes. Here come the Hawks, down by three. Henderson with a block from behind. I tell you. Henderson did that at Michigan at the buzzer as Chris Weber went up. He came from behind to save that game for Indiana then. Exactly two minutes to go. Indiana leads at 67-64. And all 15,500 are standing now. How could you not be on your feet? Barnes fouls Graham, and again, Graham is not the Hoosier to foul. He had hit 21 in a row, and prior to tonight, had missed only one in Big Ten play. Tonight, he has missed one. He has hit three out of four. Barnes with his second foul, but significantly for the Hawkeyes, that is their tenth. So Indiana no longer has to hit a one and one. They're all two-shot opportunities. And Graham, of course, second in the league in free throw shooting to Sean Rusper. Indiana, the league leader, 8-0, number one team in the country. They have been to Michigan already. They've won that one. Now in Iowa City. It's Indiana by five, 145 left. Hawkeyes need to find some momentum, some rhythm on the offense. Smith takes it all the way. And he found it there going through three Hoosiers. Iowa tried to get a timeout, unable to do so. And now it's gonna have to be pressure. Again, if you're Iowa, the guy you wanna foul is Matt Nover, but he will rarely handle the ball in this situation. Again, if you're a ball handling team, you get it to the people that can make the free throws and handle the ball well. Graham, a good job. Barnes did the turn move, they call it. So they got Graham to turn around. Smith almost deflected it coming from behind. In this Big Ten season, Graham is now 29 of 31 from the free throw line. He is virtually automatic. And it's Indiana by four. Bobby Knight after career victory, number 608. And Graham's free throws give Indiana a lead of five. A minute 17 left. Smith for three. Cheney and Barnes scrap for the rebound. And now the Hawkeyes bust foul. And it's back to Graham and Bailey. They have to keep Graham from the ball. Unable to do so. And Nover's the guy you want to foul. And Earl gets the ball without fouling him. Coming up with a big block. 
Barnes with the miss. We are down to 44 seconds, and Indiana has the basketball and a lead of five. Hawkeyes are going to have to foul right now. The time is going off the clock. You cannot wait. Hawkeyes no cannot wait. You got to go after him. And Murray commits the foul, his fifth, but the clock winds down to 27 seconds. The to Kenyon Murray. That is his fifth. Murray fouls out with a total of four. And the storyline we said on Kenyon Murray in the last seven games when he's had double figures, Hawkeyes have won. He's been held under double figures, they have lost. Graham perfect in all six second half free throw tries, seven of eight for the game. Now you're talking two possessions. This is a big free throw for Indiana. Makes this, that's three possessions and Iowa will need the ball. Iowa must get threes though. And they must do it in 24 seconds. That's all that's left in regulation. Looking Bill will take it. And is rebounded by Bailey. Bailey fouled by Looking Bill. The senior knew he had to foul. He went after him immediately. And the clock is down to 14.2 seconds. It is now time for the big play of the game, brought to you by Norwest Banks. And this is number one Indiana, showing you some of the reasons. Team play, able to get it inside. Graham to Cheney and a dump off to Nover. Goes across the lane with a jump hook. So the Hawkeyes have battled hard against that top-rated team in the country. But barring a miracle, they will fall short. But what a great effort by Iowa tonight. A very emotional two weeks. Hawkeyes win two, lose two. In the last three minutes, Iowa one of six from the field. Timeout, Indiana. Hoosiers will take a timeout, 14.2. Seconds left in the ball game. Time for a message brought to you by DuPont. Team in the country leading Iowa 73 to 66, and we're down to the final 14 seconds. It's been a while since the Hawkeyes knocked off a number one. Looks like they may have to wait a bit longer. It was back in the Chicago Stadium, days of the old stadium double headers. Ralph Miller's first year as a Hawkeye coach. Beat John Wooden. Team went on to win the national title. Indiana won't foul. The Hawkeyes have to pump it up in a hurry. And it is out of bounds. And I'll tell you right the there, Wade Looking Bill goes up for a three. Cheney jumps into him. Nothing called. And the ball game will come to an end with the ball in the hands of Calvert Cheney. Cheney with a 27 point night as top rated Indiana downs Iowa the final. Indiana 73, the Iowa Hawkeyes 66.